So you guys uh, ready for Halloween, Patrick? I am. <laughs> Fully loaded. <laughs> Patrick usually has the night vision going. Locked and loaded. Who said I unloaded? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to, soon to uh, Disney with the grandkids, and uh, there's a place called Machine Guns America that I go down there. Oh, yeah? Wow. And I get to shoot belt-fed machine guns. Wow. I don't get to do that too often at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> too often at home. I had to introduce you to Not my never. neighbors. <laughs> introduce me to your neighbors? <laughs> So, a short show today, I think. We only have uh, four stories, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're all hard-hitting. Yeah. Well, this one came out from uh, Atlas VPN, which I subscribe to their newsletter. And they always have statistics uh, towards this time of year. And so, this one is top five crypto cyber threat statistics of the last year, dated October 17th. Um, Guess what? Cryptocurrencies are kind of in the pooper. I think a lot of people might disagree, but there's risk. There's high reward and high risk in playing in that market for sure. Yeah. So the number one story is crypto hackers stole almost $2 billion in H1 2022. Yeah, with a B. That is a lot of money. Or is it real money? I don't know. I think it's like Monopoly money. It is Mm. like somebody stole your Monopoly money. It costs real money. It's, Over $1 billion <laughs> were looted from the Ethereum ecosystem projects alone. Yeah. Yeah, and that's well, that's sad because there's been a lot of hype around Ethereum and the merge and all that other stuff happening with Ethereum. So it's, you know, it's, it's usually a pretty safe place, that and Bitcoin. I'm going to sound like a crypto bro, but I'm going to say, did you know that there's another currency that had the absolute most theft last year? It's called the dollar. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I heard, I heard hundreds of billions of dollars of that was stolen, and that doesn't even include the government. Wait a minute, uh, <laughs> are you talking about the dollar or the dollar? The, the dollar. dollar, the dollar, dollar, dollars, pounds, and euros, gyros, euros, gyros. It's a great, especially with feta. <laughs> <laughs> Satiki. But no, Satiki, but seriously, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot of theft there because there's a lot of activity and there's a lot of chances to to fool people. Mostly it's around people not securing their wallets, people trusting exchanges that don't deserve their exchanges, mm. people getting involved in um, new technologies that are so new that they've outrun their security mm. checks or don't have any. Mm-hmm. And so it's the same old story. If you if you used a hey, hey Vinny's bank, sorry to anybody named Vinny, hey, Vinny's <laughs> bank, you know, give me the money, I'll put it in my trench coat. Who'd look for it there? Vinny's discount bank. <laughs> exactly. I, I charge lower fees than all the other banks. Um, <laughs> uh, did you, one of your phones just go off with a with a crypto alert? Is that me? <laughs> I think that's Mr. Hines. Yeah, that I I, I I'm getting hit by my geopolitical uh, brethren about things going on in uh, in a war zone far from us. Okay. What? There's war zones going on. Mm, well, if there's, if there's anything that you want to throw in there, just go right ahead. All right. You know, well, this, is a, this is a security show. That's true. All right. So number two, crypto miners were the most common malware family in 2021. Yeah. I was surprised by this one. I was surprised by this one too. And I I think the thing is, so what they're saying is if somebody exploits a system, you have your go-tos, right? You could either steal some data and try and, you know, leverage it in some way. Mm -hmm. You could ransomware the system and encrypt everything and hope the, the end user wants to pay to get that data back. Or you could deploy a crypto miner. And and according to the statistics, the number one thing is deploying a crypto miner, which was actually quite surprising. Because typ- typically what we see is is a reverse relationship between crypto mining and uh, ransomware. So when, when you see ransomware on the rise, usually ransomware on the rise means cryptos are are doing terribly, right? When, when crypt- the value of cryptos go down, where it doesn't make sense to spend the compute time to actually mine crypto coins, um, then then ransomware gangs go, you know what, we're just going to ransom the system. It's actually, we'll make more money off the system. Um, if it's encrypted and the, and the owner pays to get the data back, then mm-hmm. we would using their system to mine coins. Yeah. But when crypto goes back on the rise, the cost of cryptocurrencies go back on the rise, what we typically see is de- a decline in ransomware 
Mm. And uh, and more crypto miners are deployed as malware because they're more because they're both probabilistic endeavors. The mm-hmm. it means that you you encrypt somebody with ransomware. There's no guarantee they're going to pay the fine, yeah. and they may not be extortable. Um, the same is true of mining. If you do the mining, you might not get any coins. So they're both probabilistic. So they're they're basically doing a, a risk reward um, algorithm. Or, or a estimation, a decision. Mm-hmm. And it's just interesting to see that crypto mining, I'd rather have someone on my system crypto mining than ransomwareing yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, me too. So, yeah, I, I found that to be an interesting statistic because we hear a lot about ransomware. But, um, you know, most people don't know when they have crypto miners on their system. My bet is that we're not going to get a policy of firing, you know, missiles at people who crypto mine no. illegally versus those who ransomware. Hmm. Oh, that's an interesting Coming point. For you. Is it a lesser sentence at that point? I think it would be, I think it's lesser that it would be even investigated because uh, w- with ransomware, you're giving away the fact that you were there. It's, I mean, it, that's part of the deal. With crypto mining, they might never find out you were there. They just see, oh, that, that server is a little sluggish. Put more memory in it. Yeah. So, okay. I'm sure yeah. that happens all the time. Okay, kids, your hacker advice for the day from Patrick <laughs> Hines. It's criminal career advice. Wow. We should have to put a dollar in a jar every time we call cause that to have to be played. <laughs> yeah. If you uh, ever want to make the mad, mad dollars and don't want to get arrested, deploy crypto miners. Yes, there's less chance you'll actually go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Throw the dice. <laughs> right. <laughs> Feeling lucky, punk? Well, yeah. Do you? I want to see somebody use that as their defense. Well, listen, I was listening to security this week and Patrick Hines said this was the way to go to not get arrested. So Yeah, and if you don't pay if you don't pay attention, you're gonna get visited by a short ghost with a New Hampshire accent holding an Uzi. <laughs> Entirely possible. All right. So number three, over twelve billion dollars, billion dollars in crypto stolen in the past decade. Yeah. And that's and that's really just a sensationalization of the first one. Yeah. Yep. You know, because Agreed. honestly, what that says is that it's increasing because if there's two billion last year, but there's only twelve billion over ten years, that means it hasn't been consistent. It's been mm-hmm. increasing. Yeah, you're yep. right. Yep. All right. Agreed. Just, I, I does the math. All right. <laughs> Not so much the grammar. <laughs> <laughs> but the math. <laughs> All right. Number four, blockchain.com, Luno, and Cardano are the uh the top most fished crypto projects. Luno and Cardano sounds like the guys I get my pizza from on 4th <laughs> right, Street. Right, right. That's the mob family. Luno That's and Luno Cardano. And Cardano. <laughs> they got a great wow. sauce. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the, the great thing about Cardano is, you know, some of these, what's interesting about these chains is they all, although they are blockchain and, and they do have the ability to, you do have the ability to track transactions through certain chains the mm. transactions are, are kind of muddied. It's, it's hard for you to determine who's actually buying what. So mm. a lot of these, a lot of these, um, exchanges, what they'll do is, um, they'll take a whole bunch of transactions, like a, a whole bunch of orders for buys and a whole bunch of orders for sells. And they'll put them in this, like this one transaction block saying, Hey, all these transactions processed at the same time and the buys and sells equaled out. But they won't mm. tell you exactly who is the person buying exactly what or who is the person mm. so ex- excelling is exactly. Right. So you get to the point where you're like, okay, well, I could narrow it down to a hundred offenders. Maybe one of them was the one who was, I don't know, funding a terrorist or whatever it may be, but it's really mm. hard to track. So you start to see a lot of, of criminal syndicates start targeting these specific blockchains um, just because it makes it much harder to notice money coming and going. Let's dig into that arbitrage for a second. And this sure. is kind of the kind of things that hackers try to exploit in all systems. So arbitrage is the idea that you exploit an imbalance in a system. So if Carl's trying to buy pork bellies at a certain price or, or oil barrels of oil at a certain price. Uh, it's and, definitely pork bellies. And <laughs> or whiskey ba- whiskey barrels. How about whiskey oh, barrels? Definitely pork bellies pork. more than whiskey, actually. So <laughs> if he's selling pork bellies for a certain price and Dwayne's looking to buy, a lot of times those are done as a range. And so mm. so Carl will offer, you know, for a hundred dollars per unit and Dwayne's gonna offer up to a hundred and three dollars per unit. Well, they'd get matched because Wayne's willing to spend the hundred dollars that Carl offered. But if I can get in the middle of that, I can take the extra three bucks that he was willing to pay. And he'll think he bought him from Carl for $103 because that's how much he was willing to pay. 
and Carl will still only get his hundred dollars because that's what he sold them for. But I'll arbitrage that three bucks. And so that's that's uh, arbitrage is a fancy word for crime. It is, <laughs> and and that's why the stock sh- exchange uses it so often. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Patrick's coming in hot today. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, he's coming in hot. hot. What? What? Oh, I saw I saw I saw a sticker. Sticker. I use my <laughs> I I use my best her. accent for this. I saw a sticker <laughs> on a car and it said B A A space H A space B A. And I looked at it and I didn't know what it meant for a second until I said it. Be happy. No, it's Bahaba. Oh Bahaba. Oh Bahaba. That's a great place. Bahaba. It's, I think in Ohio they pronounce it Bar Harbor. <laughs> so Bahaba. But it was brilliant. I, I, I couldn't actually read. I, I, so I found out I'm illiterate when it comes to my accent. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I all I know it. is I'm getting towards that time of year where I got to put up, I clean out my gut is G U D D I Z. And my Storm Wind is S T A W M W I N D I Z. You do pretty good for a Southerner. Right? Southern. That is pretty good. What do you mean? C- Carl has a Southern accent, meaning uh, he's from Southern, Southern New, New England. England that is. <laughs> <laughs> I thought uh, you guys said South y'all and all Boston. that stuff. Right? I know. Right. <laughs> I, anything south of Boston. I was born and raised in Quincy, so that's right there. there. Yeah. yeah. Just, that's like being from Boston, but better. Better than Boston. <laughs> all right. Better. Number five. You're going to have to explain this one to me. DeFi related hacks. That's D E F I related hacks it. accounted for 76% of all major hacks in 2021. So, so DeFi is one of the promises of crypto. So it, people look at crypto and like, what's the point? There's a what lot of points. DeFi? One is to try to get. What does it stand for? Decentralized Let's... finance. Okay. Thank you. So, so DeFi is the idea that I, I want to borrow money. And instead of borrowing money from a big bank, why don't I borrow money from the community? And instead of paying huge fees to a fat cat, I can what? pay fees what? to the community. Why don't you just steal it like everybody else? Well, that's, that's, that, that was stories Arbitrage number one it, through baby. four. Right. That was stories number one through four. <laughs> arbitrage. <laughs> you have to have an MBA to do arbitrage. <laughs> arbitrage. <laughs> arbitrage. Um, so DeFi is one of the promises, especially of um, – of Ethereum because you have contracts that are built into the coin. So right. for example, if if I'm a middleman, I can hold a transaction between Carl and Dwayne, but I'm going to take a fee. Mm-hmm. But what Dwayne and Carl can also do is is do a DeFi platform where the there's some criteria that if it's met, the money moves over from one party to the other. And the criteria is absolute. It either happens or it doesn't. And it okay. could be the number of leads that are downloaded, the number of hits to a website, yeah. the fact that you know, uh, something was moved from one wallet to another, something verifiable. And so there's no need for an in, for a, a middleman who's going to take a bite. Right. And so that's what DeFi is all about. So there's lots of platforms that are popping up on phones that do DeFi that'll do things like give you access to your check in your checking account bef- even 24 hours before you get paid. Okay. So they're lending you money on a very short term basis for very low, low dollars. And so it's, it's allowing, a, it's more of a, a, a bank without banking. Okay. Or banking without the bank. All right. All right. Well, that's it for that uh, uh, report. What's next, guys? <laughs> Cobalt Strike. Oh, my gosh. I love this story. You go ahead then. <laughs> okay. So I this is where I get shot in Freud. You and sound like I, Charles I, Nelson Riley oh my right there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about this. this is your- <laughs> we just dated ourselves because no one else will date us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that Sorry. joke might have dated you as well. <laughs> hey, uh, believe it or not, this is a serious dad. show. All yeah. right, okay. <laughs> believe it or not. Um, so what's interesting? Okay, so critical RCE remote code execution vulnerability discovered in a popular Cobalt Strike right? hacking software. So what's awesome? I, what I love about this article. Um, so Cobalt Strike is a it's a offensive security tool, presumably for offensive security professionals to test customer networks who have signed a contract with that customer in which the customer knows that you are testing their network with this tool. Keep that in mind because that's so important lost, for this story. It's not even funny. It's important for this story. It's a pen so testing tool. It's a pen testing tool. Yeah, oh. it's used for allowing guys like us to test networks like yours. So- 
So let me add some color commentary in history. So we have history with the Cobalt Strike guys. That is very interesting. Okay. Should I, I tell the story? Oh, go the ahead. Story? Go so ahead. Co- when Cobalt Strike ca- first came out, there was a guy, and I think his name is Mudge. Very Pretty famous guy. Very mm-hmm. talented programmer. And he was dead set, absolutely vociferously committed to the fact that his platform would not be used by hackers so they monitored very closely to make sure it wasn't being run anywhere that it shouldn't have been run okay. that you know the licenses were tracked diligently and we ended up running it at a client location offshore and uh, got slapped in the wrist they wouldn't they wouldn't renew it they wouldn't mm. let us renew our subscription wow. and so i had a conversation with him explained what was going on and he said oh, okay yeah that makes sense well you know and and the week later when he was supposed to turn back on our licenses he sold the company. And then from then on, it became Hack Central, and people started oh to gosh. go do things. Everybody on the planet has used this software attack. Criminal syndicates use this software all the time. This is like the one of the number one pieces of software. If you're a, a criminal syndicate and trying to break in organizations and have access to it, you just use Cobalt Strike. And it's we got everywhere blackballed. on the internet. Yeah, wow. exactly. We so got, we as a legitimate company couldn't get it, but uh, so apparently cyber criminals well, everywhere. We never yeah. really renewed it because... It was one of those things where, well, you know, it wasn't, there were other platforms to be right. used and we wait started using those. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. Did you get blackballed before or after this show went on the air? <laughs> just four. I just, I just want to know. Before. Just, yeah, exactly. Before. <laughs> I, just like them. I mean, here's like a nice guy. I had a good conversation with him. Very bright guy. He wrote the platform from the beginning and I'm, I'm glad he cashed out. I, I, at least I believe that's the timing that he sold oh, it yeah. right around the time. Yep. It was. And um, and then they never got back to us. And then we never really inquired after them, though. But it's nah. used everywhere now um, well, as a command it, and control structure. Is it still going to be used? I mean, this is oh, a yeah. serious vulnerability. Oh, yeah. No, so this uh, is fantastic. Oh, so, okay, so get this. Get this. All right. So it's, good, it's, only, awesome. it's only supposed to – it is awesome. It's only <laughs> supposed to be sold to – legitimate pen testing companies right. who have a contract with a customer to pen right. test their network. Awesome. Great. Understood. And how do um, they figure and, that out? And wait, wait, how did they figure out that you were testing a legitimate customer? How did they figure out customer? that you're legitimate? What's the test? Uh, when we first went to buy it, they looked at our website. Oh, yeah. They wanted a DNB report. They did yep. a credit check on the yep. the person who was registering it and they okay. did they did a search. I mean, this guy was super thorough back in the day. They, they do their so they did their checks. Absolutely. Due diligence is happening. Right. So once once the company transitioned, um, it seems like everybody and their brother now has Cobalt Strike and uses it, using it for nefarious reasons. Okay. All right, yeah, so yeah. let's. So that's the situation today. Is people use and it's a very powerful tool. People I, use this I've, tool to break into all I've sorts bought, of stuff. I've bought rifles easier than I bought Cobalt Strike the first time. So <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> say right. anything. To yeah, me. it's I pretty mean, I mean, you, you go sell to them a, at Seven Eleven. That's right. You go to Seven Eleven. Hey, give me a <laughs> yeah, rifle. But you got to go to Seven Eleven. I mean, that's pretty bad. So. <laughs> So uh, what's the requirement to buy a rifle? Cash. <laughs> Cash and shut up. Cash and fingers. Fingers. <laughs> Need to be breathing. So needless to say. <laughs> oh, I uh, okay. I gotta I gotta intercept. All right. There's a report from a pretty credible source that Russia is issuing airsoft flak vests no. to soldiers and is giving airsoft rifle scopes. To soldiers, I don't even know what that is. What is that? That is airsoft. Things like little plastic gun. pellets. Yeah, little. They're not even BB guns. They're not metal. They're little plastic pellets. You know the really look realistic looking guns with okay. the, the orange tip at the end. I, I guess. Yeah. A lot of kids get sh- unfortunately a lot of kids get shot by the police because they're they're wielding these and they think it's oh, a real gun. Okay. But when you play it, you can wear like little armor. That's it's really just a pad, and right. it'll stop Foam. the BB. It'll stop the plastic BB from hurting you. They're not bulletproof. They are not bulletproof. So wait a minute. Is and this so, Russia's new imperial army? Uh, yes. The clones. Yeah, the stormtroopers. All the clones and stormtroopers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's just it's just showing how they're out of equipment and they're and some of the reports that are coming back are just they'd be they'd be hilarious if they weren't so sad because yeah. these are young kids that don't want to be there. I know it's terrible. But, um, I just thought that when you said that, <laughs> I had to chime that in. Did that just come across your screen? Because I did hear. No, a little, I, I read about it last. While night. we were okay. Yeah. Right. All right. So getting back so wait, to this vulnerability. Yeah. Cobalt strike. Goodness cobalt gracious, strike. Patrick. Carl, shut his mic off. <laughs> My God. <laughs> All right. So coming back to this story. So everybody on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick's doing charades <laughs> like he's talking. We can't hear him. <laughs> oh, this yes. is only a YouTube show. <laughs> uh, I know, right? <laughs> Thank next, God it's next not. Year. Next, next year. Next year. Yeah. So. 
cut, so everybody and their brother are using this thing to to break in organizations. Uh, criminal syndicates are now using Cobalt Strike, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. So the researchers at the IBM X Force, uh, which first off, whoever came up with the name, kudos. X Force. <laughs> because X Force. Yeah, that's their like elite hacking. It sounds crew. like Donald Trump came up with that one. It. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I IBM X Force. Book. They have their own uh, semi truck filled with like. All sorts of gadgets and whatnot. It's cool stuff. But anyway, yeah, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) dunk tanks, whatever. So (laughs) these guys figured out um, that the Cobalt Strike beacon, which is the the implant you put on a customer site. So when you go into a customer site, I break into a server. I put a little piece of code on that server so I can always get back into it. It's called. It's a a, like a little agent. Call it. A they found out. Hey, you know what? Yeah, they're like, you know what's weird about this little agent that you put down there when you hack a server? You actually can send a command back to the command and control structure, to the hackers, and it will run code on their side. Oh. (laughs) So they Uh. found out that a legitimate customer could inject code into that communications and have it run on the hacker's side. Isn't that the plot of Hellboy? It sounds (laughs) like a movie. (laughs) But wait, it gets better. Normal disclosure is like 90 days, right? You go to a company, you explain, hey, listen, there's this bug, you know, you really should fix it. It's dangerous and in the field, et cetera. No, no, not with this, because what's the risk? The risk here is, is a customer that you're legitimately pen testing going to do this to you? No, Hmm. of course not. They're a customer you're legitimately pen. So who is this saving if you wait 90 days? It's only saving the people who are using this in places they shouldn't be using this. So they just released it. They're like, oh, by the way, (laughs) this is a way that everybody right now is infected with Cobalt Strike can just take control of all of the hacking servers out there, which is awesome. That is is very cool to see. That deserves the moniker awesome. Dwayne, right mm. especially because it the powers of good like the 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 uh the rebels are striking back you know rebel alliance we like it it's mm-hmm. the return yeah. of the jedi <laughs> uh so cool and it, and it, ha- it couldn't have happened to a better piece of software so i'm super excited about it. right right okay shall we move on to oh no before we do that let's take a break we'll be right back after this very important message Okay, Dex patches authentication bug that enabled unauthorized access to client applications and go. So <laughs> this is one of our three questions like, what do you, why do I care? How do you know if it affects you is really the first question. And yeah. that is that if you're using Dex with a version of 2.34.0 or less, you might be a redneck. It might, yeah. it might affect you. <laughs> hey, um, and, and if you don't know what Dex is, don't worry about it. Yeah, um, you're not but- using it. Right, then you're not using it, but it, but it, in in short, it's an it's a it's a layer on top of OAuth two, doing authentication. That's it. Yeah, it's so, it's not yeah. like log four J or no, or these no, hidden no. Right. variables that can be in your set top box or stuff. You're using it. You're overtly using it. Yeah. But there is a patch for it, so it's patchable. Uh, it's pretty severe. It's a nine point three CVSS score. Whoa. Um, there's thirty five million systems, according to Shodan right. plus that are affected and it, it allows for authentication bypass. So the, the consequences is if an attacker can trick you into visiting a malicious website, mm. they can steal your OAuth authorization code. And OAuth is a, an open authorization tokenization. It's, it's basically widely used as a standard. Yeah. It's, it's basically when you log in to a website X with your Google account or your yeah. Twitter account, they're using OAuth to do that validation, that verification. Yeah, it's the lingua mm-hmm. franca of authorization. Yes. Uh, and then it can be used to gain unauthorized access to your applications. In other words, it's a it's a two-factor authentication bypass potential uh, or just yeah. authentication in general bypass, depending. Hey, I heard – I got a question. This is from a listener. I heard you guys say that you shouldn't use 2FA. <laughs> <laughs> we never said that. <laughs> he, they didn't really say that, did they? No, 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 no. But 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 we have heard rumblings, right? That people say you don't use two FA because it's getting that's hacked. Like well, the, if you want to try not using two FA, then that's like the somebody died because they were seat belted into their car. Yeah, I'm exactly. not going to wear a seat belt Therefore, anymore. It, statistically, right. it's possible that you'll be foiled by it, but not yeah. likely. You're more likely to get hacked if you do not have multi-factor authentication and we use it everywhere we can all of your websites that you go to in, right. in fact I'll, I'll send you a link right now carl for you to click on 
so I'll give you two factors. <laughs> yeah, I got some in my eye. Oh, it's my middle Yo, finger. Whoa. whoa. Again, we should be a video. A video. <laughs> I think I described it well. Yeah. I think so. I, think I, so. I felt like I was there in the moment. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. All right. What's last? So last is one that's right now causing a whole lot of the internet to to be a little bit panicked, but honestly, we're it's not as widespread as you think. So this is. I mean, fair fair enough. The internet is traumatized by everything that's happened ever. Mm. Yeah. And so you know, log yeah. for J, log log for shells. There's all sorts of these log for and number word number shell. Those are you know it's traumatic. Yeah. This so is another word number shell, number shell, isn't it? Yeah, yes. word number shell. This is text for shell. No, it's, so, it's text to shell. To shell. Well, it, you it, you can text for shell, but you can also text to shell. Can I text matter. one shell? What if you I'm can't cheap? do that? That makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> it was log for shell. This is text for shell. But it, you know what? I don't know. Hackers make this stuff up. So first off, it's an exploit. The CVE, if you really like following CVEs, this is CVE 2022-42889. Um, in essence, what this is, is this is a uh, an exploit in the Apache Commons text library. Okay. So the Apache Commons text library, um, I believe it's version 1.9 or less. Is that a um, JavaScript thing or a Linux thing or what? Yeah, it's a JavaScript thing uh, and it's a text library. So what it, what it allows you to do is convert between different types of text. So you could do, I want to decode some string from base64 back to re regular string or encode a string in the base64. Right. And for mere or, mortals, they don't know what the heck. We're, they have one type of text, thing. the kind you read. Yeah. yeah, it's a programmer thing. It's a programmer thing. Text yeah. comes in different formats. Right. Different uh, URLs, for example. Yeah. Uh, when you type in a, you know, a single tick in a URL and hit enter, you'll notice it comes back as percent two seven. Well, why? That's because it's been URL encoded. Right. It's safe to pass over the internet. Um, well, there's all sorts of different, you know, us developers do this all the time. We're constant. I mean, heck, there are sometimes it feels like that's my job is just changing text from one yeah. format to another. Right. Um, so there are tons of libraries that do that. And, and this commons text does just that. But what's interesting about this commons text is it also gives you the ability to run certain types of lookups. So you can say, hey, I'd like to go look up the name of this server through DNS or the IP address of this server through DNS. Why so do they do that, Patrick? You can call. Because it makes it more convenient. Yeah. Convenient. I can't say that with an accent. Convenient. It's the same, right? Can it's the same in Boston. Convenient. <laughs> Isn't that convenient? I like the church lady. Right. Isn't that special? Right. Isn't that special? <laughs> so so uh, there's a canonical example of you you mentioned base 64 encoding and that's yes. a way to take bytes like raw binary data and expand it into a string you know right so you might have a chunk of a file you turn that into a big string it's going to be a lot bigger as a string than it is you know take up more space and more bytes than it is if it was binary but it's base 64 it can travel through the internet so typically how files are uploaded is uh you take a chunk, base sixty four eyes it, send it up, and then the server and it, it fits into a, it. It fits into a binary packet better that way. Yeah. So that's that's the real advantage of base sixty four. Yeah, right? and like we use it all the time when we're deploying uh, reverse shells. When we try and break into an organization, we'll use base sixty four all the time because there's special characters in there. So, it yeah. but it's not encryption. No, it it's is not. not encryption. Oh dear God, yes, no, it is not encryption. It's like Pig Latin is not encryption. <laughs> Yeah, it's very <laughs> easy to I've had developers in the past tell me that. It's yeah. like, oh, you'll never figure out what those keys are. It's base 64 <laughs> And I'm like, oh. Give me a second. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a calculator. I could do this by hand. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyways, so what's interesting about this is there's certain functions that you can call, like um, URL string lookup, yeah. DNS string lookup, script string lookup and XML string lookup that will go out and actually perform some function. What they discovered is you can break out of those functions and then run pretty much whatever you want on the okay. remote server. So I could say, oh, instead of doing, you know, script string lookup, 
let's do a script string lookup with something that's actually doing a uh, language.runtime.get runtime execute this command. And it will just go and run the command. Um, because it doesn't know how to look the string up, so it loads that library and then goes and runs it. Does, doesn't the configuration have to be pretty specific to allow this exploit? Does yeah, you have to be. You have to have the library, and not it's not default, but you have to have the libraries enabled to allow for DNS and URL string lookups. You have to have the Commons text installed, um, it, and you don't even have to like. You have to have a place that's exploitable where somebody can actually inject a string in there. So it's not right. like it, it's it's entirely different than something like Log4j, even though it has the four shells style, you know, name. The CVSS score of 9.8 is misleading a little bit because. Exactly. It, it, it's yes, if it's exploited, then then that's fine. But I mean, that's really bad. But the odds of it being exploited should be part of it. The The, the number of gyrations like. You know, my house, you know, if, if you got into my, uh, my my fireproof box, that would be devastating because you might get, you know, my birth stick and things like that. Right. But you just got to get in the house first. And so right. it's not like I leave that thing out by the, the, the trash. Yeah. Now it's I got all the killer killer bees in the traps, you know. <laughs> right. Right. And the vicious dogs. Um, I do have now, vicious dogs. That being said. You know, we're not downplaying this at all. You absolutely, there are checkers out there to see if your site is vulnerable to this. If you know what Apache Commons text is and you believe you're using it, you absolutely should go A, scan to see if you're vulnerable. B, go patch. There is a patch version 1.10 of the Apache Commons text release Mm -hmm. will fix this issue. Um, But don't, you know, just because it's a super high 9.8 rating, just because it has the, you know, text for shells, type style name don't don't get all you know uh concerned that you know everybody's owning everything on the internet it's it's really not as wide it's not time to panic yeah okay yet not yet (laughs) yet (laughs) yet uh so that would be our advice is go scan go patch make sure you're okay speaking of which (laughs) speaking of patching i gotta i i think i liked this tweet on twitter i've been following um i gotta pull this guy's name out one of the directors at the NSA, um, and he <laughs> he has the best tweets he put out there puts out there. And one of the tweets he put out there this week was, um, "You guys remember the slap patch? Yeah, it's like tape, mm-hmm. <laughs> like slap tape that he'd slap on the big water bin to patch yeah. something. He just put that meme out, and he's Boom. like, go patch.' And it's like, you know, <laughs> says your <laughs> software patch. is that big water thing, and you see him slapping the tape on. It was awesome. But go patch, go make sure you're uh, not vulnerable to this." That's one of our first steps of if, if you got nothing else done, go patch. Right. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Silicon Valley should have a team called the Patches. Mm-hmm. Go Patches. Yeah. Go uh, Patches. Yep. Well, guys, that sounds like the end of the show. So I'm sad it's over, but man, it's a scary place out there. Be safe and uh, patch early and often, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.